Hi everybody, it's Sandy. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today I'm going to do a little masking with brusho. I've told you before I wasn't going to leave you hanging, showing you the brusho and not showing you more ways to use it, so we're going to do that today. I'm doing the pin sites challenge for Ellen Hudson. This month I'm the sample maker, so I decided to choose a few images from the mood board and use those for inspiration for my card. And I'm going to focus on colors and then that diamond because I have the diamond die in the U rock set and I haven't used that one yet. It's just been sitting here staring at me. So I've die cut those and I'm going to place them onto my paper by drawing them on. And in order to potentially win in the challenge, you do have to use some Ellen Hudson products. So make sure that you do some shopping real quick because you could win an awesome prize if yours is chosen as the winner. So I'm tracing with a pencil the word U and then to get the inside of the O and the Y, just place the, neg the positive back into the negative and trace them. To get my placement right on that diamond, I laid down the one that I could see so I could use the negative one to trace the outside of the diamond and get it on there straight and in the right location. I wouldn't have been able to see it otherwise. And then drop the positive back into the negative and again trace inside those sections so I can paint them later when I get to that portion of the card. Now I'm going to be painting with water. I'm just painting clean water in one section because I'm going to do this section at a time and shaking on some of the Prussian blue. Now it went over where the water was so there is some blue powder on top of the, the diamond. But don't panic because that's okay. As long as there's no water on the diamond, that paint will not activate in that spot. And I'll show you how that plays out in just a few minutes. So I'm going to work on the other end because I wanted to do two cool colors on the outside and then warm colors in the middle and have, you know, just kind of some sections that blend together a little bit, but I wanted to have some really good distinct color on this and keep the colors separate a little bit. So that's why I'm doing part at a time. So on this end, I'm going to do the sea green color and look at that go. It was just really fun. The sea green seems to do this on a pretty regular basis. I don't know whether it's the amount of color, the amount of water or anything that makes it do this where the Prussian blue just went on as a solid color. Not sure what causes that. If anything, if there's anything specific, or if it's just the nature of those pigments and how they move. But I'm taking my brush and I'm just going into some of the little corners where I may have not spread that water enough and I have the ability to adjust that edge and make sure I get all the way up to the line. So when you're painting with just water you can't see really well and it's easy to fix it when you're done though. I'm heat setting it a little bit partially to blow off some of that powder so you can either do it this way or after it completely dries, you can let it air dry, then you can brush it off with a really soft brush. And as long as it doesn't hit any water, it'll just go away. So now I'm going to do the inside sections because I wanted to do some strong red and yellow. And if I did a ton of red and yellow at the same time as all of the green and blue are completely activated, then I would have all the colors all over the place and they would maybe make mud a little more than I wanted to in this. And you'll see I, I get some somewhat distinct sections of color doing it this way, a section at a time. When I heat set it, I didn't completely heat set it. It's still a little bit damp. And that's so that I can wet some of those edges and move them around still. But you can also reactivate brusho after it is dry because that's basically what water, watercolor does. You can reactivate it and fuss with things after the painting is kind of completed. So I've shaken on yellow and this uh, vermilion red and I'll spread those around as well up to the line so that the word you actually reads better than it's reading right now. So you can see how loose I was with the water. You want to stay as far away from the edge as you can. You don't want to go over too much because you can always push the color but you can't move it back out. Once this brush show is on you're not going to be able to get your white back. But you could do this entire technique that I'm doing and add the brusho background and just glue on the U and the diamond 
but I thought it would be really interesting to have them sort of appear out of the watercolor. And I'm really happy with how it did come out. So I'm glad I went to this extra effort, but it's also fun to think about all the different ways that we could use this same technique with all kinds of stamped images or other things. So stay tuned for more ideas coming on the use of brush out because I'm pretty excited about this stuff. I will be probably doing a few, um, a few of the periscopes on brush out just because I don't want my entire channel to be inundated with brush out, but I want to show you a lot more ideas on how to use it. So stay tuned for those. If you're not on periscope, it's my new gig. <laughs> I'm just having fun playing with it. So I decided I wanted to add more of that sea green because that was my favorite part of this card so far is that section to the left of the Y. And when I added it over the red, it's a complementary color. So it went really dark. So that is one of those things that happens. You'll find as you start working with this stuff, which colors will darken each other and which ones will turn into mud or which ones will look absolutely perfect the way you want them. So I've got that nice, nice kind of section building at the, the bottom there. I wanted to sort of let it drag out and trail off a little bit more. So I get more of that soft watercolor look. And this technique is pretty, I guess pretty controlled given what Brusho is because it's not a product intended to be highly controlled, but this gives us a little bit better ways of using it other than just shake it on and let it do its own thing. It's like we can train it to do what we want it to do. And what I decided was I wanted more of the sea green on this thing after seeing how it went on on the left. So I created some more sections on the right after letting it all dry so that I could add some more of the sea green. And I could have added it while it was wet, but this allows me to at least make sure that I'm getting it where I want it and I can reactivate only the sections that I want. But the sea green color is a blast because look at it, it did the same thing again, feathered itself out and did that amazing texture. Very, very cool. And then it softened as it dried, as you can see. So now I'm working on the inside of the gem and I'm going to shake on some of the yellow color and then I just have to spread that around and after it's dry I'll dust it off with a soft brush and end up with a white outline around all of that beautiful yellow gold brush -o color. So all of this is one layer. It's a nice flat card. How awesome is that for a one layer? Well it's one layer glued onto a card base okay and I did put it on some of the shimmering black paper that they have, a uh, cardstock that they have at Ellen Hudson, which is really cool. I'll link you to it. It's got a really cool shine to it when you look at it in the light. So I'm going to jet. I'll leave you with a couple of brush show videos here. And I invite you to join in on the Pin Sites Challenge this month. I would love to see some of you who I know join in and win a prize. That would be awesome. Have a great day, you guys. Bye-bye.